Look at how he slowly, just gradually adds things. He's starting to add in that um, annoying, the front leg a little bit, and the teeth. Basically, once I have this distance where I'm not taking a step back all the time, I'm keeping this distance, he'll add another thing in that allows me to kind of have variety to keep closing the distance. This is an interesting kick to the front leg because it's not like a super I'm nailing your leg as hard as I can. It's a little bit of an annoying like stinging of the leg. And he wants me to replace my front foot with my back foot. It's like a little skip forward. So what he's explaining to me here verbally is that if you kick the leg first, the higher scoring point of the body kick is more likely to land. If you go straight for the body kick, it's likely that they'll see it and block it. If you hit him with the leg kick first, you're giving a better chance to a higher scoring point after. It's honestly like jabbing before you throw the cross instead of just like trying to get your back arm into someone's face just as it is. So he wanted the jab there too. So jab, leg kick, and then the body kick. So you're basically doing multiple things to distract your opponent, to put their consciousness anywhere other than where you're actually trying to score your point. But again, something that he's teaching me in doing this is how to close distance. This is not like stay at this kicking range all the time and just kind of touch him with as many non-powerful strikes as possible. This is annoying him and distracting him so that I can work my way into the range I want to be in. It's really an amazing thing to be teaching me because he knows that I'm Moi Kao. He is not Moi Kao, but he can fight that way if he wants. So he's basically teaching me how to use these elements to get to the range that he knows I do really well in. And here he's specifying how he wants me to use my feet to get that foot on his leg. See how my back foot is basically just replacing where my front foot was standing. It's very linear. You're not taking a step out. He's, he's telling me to be more relaxed. You can't actually do this really stiff. Protect himself on that other side. But as you're coming forward, you basically want to protect your larger score all the time, which is your open side. See how he popped up his front leg? He's being me again. <laughs> That's how I get hit on my way in all the time. So that's all right. That's his closed side. That's not a big deal. But he can bounce that front leg as well. Like, he doesn't put all his weight on the front leg, and he doesn't put all his weight on the back leg. So he's pretty even all the time, even though he's going front leg drag, front leg drag. So he's able to respond to an opponent striking as he's coming forward all the time. When I go backwards... I actually do it pretty well. Like, the back leg goes and the front leg comes. But when I come forward, my back leg is still the, the like, uh, vanguard in what I'm trying to do. <laughs> He's making fun of me now. <laughs> He's showing me how I do it. When, when Thai trainers imitate you to show you what you're doing wrong, they always exaggerate it, and it's hilarious. But it's not that different from what you're actually doing. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> It's always very ridiculous. <laughs> That's not how you do it right there. <laughs> What's funny to me about this is I've been at this gym for five years. So the guy has watched me walk wrong for five years and never said anything to me because I'm not his student. This is something about when you come and train in Thailand, ask questions. People won't necessarily tell you, and we want instruction, so just be brave and ask.
So here he's making me move in more directions a little bit because of what he was talking about with Dern. And I just totally went back to my old style of like back foot, front foot, <laughs> stupid duck walk thing that I'm doing. But here is his Dern, okay? So he's femur. If you're a femur fighter, you want to be able to respond to your opponent and move in any direction all the time. Like, you need to be very quick. So that's how he comes forward, without rushing and without stopping. Like, he's very steady paced. <laughs> I'm saying that as a Westerner, I'm very tense all the time. So I come, I like creep forward. So he's talking to me about one of our fighters fought uh, really well in round four at Lumpany, and then in five he was kind of slow. Right there he's imitating the way Golden Age fighters came forward. He's like, they didn't break pace at all. They basically were just walking forward. And he's like, your weapons can come out at any moment when you come forward like that. If you come forward and stop, if you're slow, you're going to get hit as you're trying to come forward, and then you have to deal with that rather than just being able to kind of deflect and um, not be bothered by being hit on the way in. Look at how he can strike as he's like walking in. He's talking about how Yodkun Pan, golden age fighter, who lives next door, he's talking about how when he came forward, when Yodkun Pan comes forward, he never goes backwards. He doesn't even pause. He's just coming forward all the time, but his weapons can come out of that. It's basically a Superman. He has the kick go first and then you punch off of it. But why it's so good, being this half knee, half kick, is that you're at punching range. A lot of times if you do the kick and then punch for a Superman, you basically can't throw a full power kick because the ranges don't work together. But he's coming up so it looks like a kick and then it's that puncture knee at the end at an angle. It's really cool. And the balance is better for me than throwing a long kick first. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> Doing it in real time. You can see how close he likes to fight. So he's telling me to bring my punch back much faster. It's like a snake. So, I do not have to bring the leg down before throwing the punch, but it's almost simultaneous in the way that he was taking a step on each one of his strikes in the slow motion at the beginning. So you, you throw the kick, and then before the leg comes down, you're throwing the punch, but it actually lands impact-wise at the same time that your leg is coming down from the kick. He wants it higher, the knee... So again, it's yo is to come up to like lift and then you punch in. But he's showing these wide knees and he's like, okay, you can throw those. But they're easy to block. When people knee wide to the outside of the body, it's really easy to block from the inside. See how he's having knee block his knees just by lifting my leg from the inside. <laughs> so instead of going wide, wide, you can set up with the wide, but then you want to do this straight knee that because it's so direct, it's very hard to block or parry. But Satan Molek's doing it with shoulder. So you can learn it. Look at how he pushes his chest in. See how he's doing it in shadow? He's saying Thai people don't train this because they're afraid of hurting themselves and each other. So a lot of people, when you fight them, they're not used to this position. I'm a clincher. I clinch a lot. I clinch for hours at a time. He does that to me once, and you can see they kind of like fall apart because it's so awful feeling. It, it breaks your entire power structure because it's so powerful of breaking that point on the neck. Oh. He rolls his shoulder in. But it's a, it's he like rolls his shoulder yeah, under. It's the same way he rolled his shoulder under in order to so do that turn. Try it because you're not feeling. Keep like when trying. he went under my tricep. 
I'm not going up. Like, I'm trying to push my shoulder in, but I'm not going up. Less talking, more feeling. So that's the normal, that's the normal lock. But then look at how he pushes his shoulder in, in the shadow. So I'm like, you already have your grip, you've already grabbed them. You already have your other hand ready to crank. You're already in position. But then as you start to squeeze, the squeeze has the shoulder pressing forward at the same time. What I had a very hard time figuring out, but eventually felt, was rolling the shoulder under, and then as you squeeze, you push it up. So the shoulder comes up. As long as you feel that one time, so He's touching me under the chin. He's showing me how he wiggles his shoulder under the chin, and then pushes up. It, you feel intense pressure here, intense pressure here, and then his shoulder is under. So you, you I'm not feel the pressure under. from the lock it under itself, so you can feel it. and then I can the, feel it from the pain shoulder side. Feel forces from the your yeah, chin up, you have to do it to and it feel just it. crushes Stop like right where it. your neck meets your head. It. <laughs> it's horrible. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 So see how I'm starting to raise my left shoulder a little bit? I'm starting to feel the push. But here's where I finally understand that it goes up. It's it not elevates here, it's up. a little bit. Yeah, feel it though. So I gotta wiggle my shoulder under his jaw. There we go. There we go. It was the same thing when he's doing his turns where he goes underneath your tricep and kind of pushes your arm up. You're, you have to pop. All right, so now, now we are getting into the meat of Chan Chai's brilliant uh, knowledge and experience. He's going to geek out on the teep. Uh, if you guys are way into the teep, there's also the man up, the first man up session where he focuses a lot on the teep. Um, these go together really well, but Chan Chai is focusing here on how to angle the actual teeping leg in order to get the most power out of it. So you can see the ball of my foot is what's making contact. He doesn't want my leg absolutely straight. There's a bend in the knee. And then he wants me up on the toe of my standing leg, but not peg-legged. Like, he just lifts his heel a little bit. Watch that. See how simultaneous that was? He comes up on the ball of his foot on the standing leg while the teeping foot is just kind of barely pushing me off. He, fl he like kind of flicks his foot <laughs> that's teething me at the same time that he's coming up on his standing leg. The timing of this is what creates the power and the accuracy. But look at how it looks like he's barely moving. I can attest that didn't feel good. That had a lot more power in it than what it looks like. It looks like nothing. But look at how balanced he is to follow afterwards. So he's just barely off balancing me and like kind of pushing me off. And then as he lands, he's on balance to um, punch or kick or follow with whatever he wants. There he's showing that's not good. What he just did there, he leaned back too much and he actually didn't put the flex in either of his feet. He's saying this is no good. See how flat foot I am. He wants just the ball of the foot. And then see how I'm coming up on my standing foot? I pushed myself backwards by coming up too high on my standing foot and not flexing my teeping foot at the same time. So the simultaneousness of those two feet working together makes sure that all your power is going forward into your opponent instead of knocking you backwards, which as a small fighter, I often do. <laughs> I knock myself backwards off of bigger people quite a lot. Here he's focusing on having balance as you come down. So he's saying that my heel was up too high as I was coming down and my foot was angled a little bit. This is very, very detailed, so watch what he's doing with his feet, and I'll try to catch all the little parts that I'm doing. See how his standing foot just barely flexed up, like his heel just barely came up? So he's explaining how if the opponent backs up, right? So if you teep them and they back up because you teeped well or because they're trying to get out of the way, you're going to have to follow them, so you have to really be on balance to follow with your strike. He's saying if they don't go anywhere, if they don't go backwards, 
see how unbalanced I was right there just to be able to strike right off of it. It's when they move is harder because you have to cover distance. So see how much you have to turn your body and protect yourself with your shoulder as you're going after that leg. <laughs> So because I'm diving after his standing leg, I'm getting out of the way of his kick at the same time. I'm asking, do you have to step outside? And he said, not too far. You actually want to step very close to his standing leg, about an arm's, like a forearm's distance. If you go too far to the side, you're actually not close enough to sweep that leg. <laughs> So see how, because I'm standing orthodox, when he kicks with that right leg, I have to go so much farther to get to his standing leg. That's why it's easier on mixed stance. He's correcting my block here. He wants the elbow and the knee to touch, and he wants me up on my toe a little bit. You will get trainers teaching you different things about whether or not you're up on your toe on that. He wants flexibility, which is why he slightly goes up on his toe. If your heel is all the way down and someone kicks you really hard, you're going to go backwards because you have nowhere to catch yourself. So I was being too tense as I was doing it, and so I corrected myself and said kamachat, which means nature, or like, uh, what's natural to you in Thai. So basically, don't be too tense, just lift it in a very, like, nonchalant way. <laughs> now he's, now he's having me block first and going under that. So I kick him first, and he blocks. And then when he tries to kick me back, I go after the standing leg. <laughs> he wanted me to make sure that I kept my guard up. It's very dangerous to just flop your arms when you're doing something that's purpose is to let you be really close to your opponent. <laughs> this is one of these things where when you're learning a drill and you forget who's kicking and who's blocking, <laughs> There's confusion. You okay. take <laughs> He forgot who was going. Fine. Okay. 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 He's saying I'm old already. I forget. But this is the thing. You can make it work. Even if you don't know who's kicking, like it just becomes a who's gonna go. So I'm saying I completely understand how to keep my right arm up on that kick, but I don't know what to do with my left arm. And he says that side's free because there's nothing they can do to that side of your body. So if you like flop that arm or drop it or like spin it a little bit to keep your balance, it's not dangerous. Just don't do something unconsciously, I guess. So he's going to kick right, and I'm going to punch right. So basically, you slam someone in the face on their power kick. I stayed exactly where I was. You have to step closer. Instead of stepping to the side, which you do when you're, like, catching the kick in order to take away some of the power, when you step in... You're taking out some of the power of the kick because you're getting into a spot of the leg that doesn't have velocity to it. If you get hit by the shin, that hurts. It's the end of the baseball bat. If you get nicked by the handle of the baseball bat while it's being swung, there's not nearly as much power on that spot. So when you're coming in for this punch, the point is to get close, not necessarily to step off.